Uh, so here we have the Mount Hardware Drifter 2. We uh, spent the night out here last night. It went pretty well. Um, here's the old tent, the Mount Hardware Approach. I set the old one up just so a comparison of um, new to old and also to kind of show you how the Mount Hardware tents hold up. We took this tent on the AT back in 2007. So it's been through a lot. It's been um, packed up and stuffed in my pack over 180 times, plus numerous other camping trips through the years. Uh, the only reason we got a new tent is because the seam seals on the rainfly, the taped seams have kind of started to dry rot. Let me show you an example. I don't know if you can tell or not. Um, you can see the little cracking in there on the seams. But I tried to put in some seam grip on the to tape over the cracked tape, uh, and that didn't work. Uh, and I've read online that Mountain Hardware doesn't have replacement flies for their tents, so uh, we resorted to getting a new tent after our last trip. Uh, we got a few leaks in the tent, but this was a really great tent. Perfectly sized for two people. Not a lot of headroom, but that's fine. Had a small footprint we could easily fit between uh, trees or bushes on tight camp spots. Um, it's a really solid tent. So the drifter we decided to go with the two-door version this time after reading good reviews plus it was $107 which is a really good deal I think. Let's take a look inside. This tent is about five inches narrower inside, so it's just enough space to fit our sleeping pads in here side by side. We didn't have any problems with uh, elbow room or anything last night. It was it was just fine. Um, you can see this tent has the bathtub design. The seam here is you know good five or six inches off the ground so if you're in a storm and you've got some uh, puddling around your tent you're gonna be just fine the seam is factory taped probably can't see that with the light in here but uh, so you don't have to go back and seam seal it it's already taped there's plenty of headroom in here There's a little storage attic up here, which is pretty handy. Put a light up there and light the tent up at night or whatever you need to store up there. We've got a corner pocket here and one other pocket on the opposite corner at the other end. It's also nice you have this um, privacy screen through here, so if you want to camp out at night without the fly on, you can still have some privacy to change your clothes or whatever if you're around other people. I did have a little uh, moisture coming in through the ground cloth last night, which you can see. If I pull it up away, 
but none of this moisture is actually seeping through the, the floor of the tent, so that's good. Here's a look at the size of the vestibule and the drifter too. Um, there's really plenty of room in here. More than enough space for uh, gear for two people. Um, plenty of space for a dog. I mean, you could easily fit a lab under there. And of course you have two vegetables. So plenty of space for storage. Overall, it's pretty set, pretty easy to set up. Just two poles, um, two st and two stakes, one for each side of the door, and uh, I suppose you could, but uh, we probably won't do this much. But you could stake the corners out, which might make this edge a little tighter. And I guess we could cinch the fly down a little bit more to, to make it uh, tight so water won't run on s down the side of the tent here. But uh, other than that, this should be a pretty solid tent if it performs anything like our approach tent did.